a special episode health and wellness save a life i'm gargi rawat now imagine a scenario where someone or a loved one suddenly collapses in front of you after a cardiac arrest and you can't do anything this is a not a, you know a scene from a movie but something that is getting quite common even young adults are suffering from sudden cardiac arrest due to a sedentary and stressful lifestyle according to the who census statistics mortality due to cardiac causes uh, has overtaken mortality due to all cancers put together but the good news is that most of these lives can be saved it's been proven that bystander cpr improves the rate of survival by almost 50% cpr knowledge will equip you with the skill and the confidence needed to transform yourself from the role of a bystander to a life saver save a life is an initiative through which people will be made aware of the early signs and symptoms of cardiac arrest so that patients can get to the hospital in time and also be trained on giving cpr if the need arises we have with us eminent cardiologists who can help you understand sudden cardiac death and the role of cpr to revive and save a life we're joined by dr vineet garg uh, hod cardio sparsh malhotra hospital shri krishna hospital agra dr devendra kumar agrawal a principal consultant cardiac sciences max super specialty hospital shalimar bag in north delhi and dr nishant tyagi associate director cardiac sciences max super specialty hospital patpur ganj in delhi thank you so much doctors for joining us on this very very important issue dr garg i'll start with you what are some of the most common risk factors now associated with cardiac disease in general and in heart attacks in particular good afternoon everyone so if we look at the risk factor of the heart attacks it can be divided into two category first category is non modifiable risk factor means the risk factor which we cannot modify which has to present in our body forever and what are these these are increasing age because we all know that as the age progresses the chances of heart attack increase and the second risk factor is male gender male patients has higher chances of heart attack as compared to females and the third non modifiable risk factor is family history if there is a family history of heart attack in some of the patients family then the chances of heart attack in that person is increased second category of risk factor is modifiable risk factor that which we can modify by our lifestyle changes and what are these these are high blood pressure that is hypertension high blood sugar that is diabetes high cholesterol that is known as dyslipidemia if the patient is taking smoking tobacco if the patient has lack of physical activity stress or obesity so these are the some of the risk factor that increases the chances of the heart attack in future all right dr agrawal what are the steps an individual can take to prevent a heart attack should they uh, go in for regular checkups yeah good afternoon everyone i uh, as rightly said by dr vineet uh, the modifiable risk factors are the risk factors which we need to focus and one should do all the efforts to control them and like quitting smoking having weight control and good physical activity is definitely important but one should also know the important numbers and uh, by doing for annual health checkups and getting the numbers like blood pressure cholesterol levels sugar levels it is very important so annual health checkup is recommended after age of 18 years and everyone should undergo annual health checkups and once the, these numbers are identified uh, one should uh, do all the efforts to keep them in control range uh for blood pressure and diabetes and cholesterol all these three uh the dietary and lifestyle modification is very important and along with those things uh having medications as advised by doctors uh to control those those important numbers is very important so one should know the numbers and keep them controlled is the theme All right now Dr Tyagi most people are not aware of the difference between heart attack and sudden cardiac arrest which may lead to you know mistakes in identifying the actual symptoms so how do we know if it's a primary cardiac arrest Yeah uh, heart attack is often confused with uh, cardiac arrest see in heart attack there is blockage in the artery supplying the heart therefore the patient is conscious is conscious and is able to tell his about his symptoms that he is having severe chest pain which is the most common symptoms from upper abdomen to bilateral arms to the lower jaw and this pain can be heaviness or a burning sensation along with it it can be <coughs> associated with breathing difficulty or profuse sweating so in heart attack the patient gives history himself and he is conscious 
while in cardiac arrest means sudden stopping of the heart and uh, therefore there is no the patient becomes unconscious and falls down suddenly there is no pulse there is no respiration and it's an acute emergency heart attack can be a cause of cardiac arrest but cardiac arrest itself can be caused by other diseases also anything which affects the heart uh, older heart attack or a valvular heart disease and sometimes in normal uh, hearts also there are genetic inotropic uh, uh, ion channel abnormalities which can leads to cardiac arrest so basic difference is cardiac arrest the patient uh, becomes unconscious suddenly and falls down and in heart attack the patient is conscious and able to give his history so that medical emergencies can be called for right now dr garg survival from sudden cardiac arrest is possible with fast appropriate medical care if it's timely how should cpr be started after cardiac arrest look that when the cardiac arrest occur what happen the heart is not able to pump the blood especially towards the brain so when we did the cpr the compression of the heart leads the brain to blood so if the patient is in cardiac arrest what we did we compressed the heart of the patient so heart is able to pump the blood towards the brain because brain is an organ if the blood supply is stopped it cannot survive even 5 to 7 minutes of stoppage of the blood towards the brain it can cause irreversible irreversible damage to the brain so whenever a patient undergo a cardiac arrest it should be started as early as possible so that we can maintain the blood flow towards the brain now if the patient is in cardiac arrest and if we stop cpr for some times the brain damage will occur and this brain damage is irreversible so whenever the cardiac arrest occur only give phone call to the appropriate medical facility and jumps into the cpr so that we can maintain the blood supply to the brain adequately All right Dr Agrawal are there different types of CPR if you could tell our viewers and which CPR can be performed by an untrained person See for basic life support uh, the CPR are, is said to be two types one is uh, the CPR which is conventional which includes both the chest compression and the breathing part which is generally provided by healthcare provider or those who are uh, fully trained in those type of Uh, CPR. The other one, which is in last, uh, which is chest compression only CPR, uh, which had been seen in studies in last one decade, that by whenever any bystander or a family person gives a chest compression only CPR to a person who had suffered a cardiac arrest, uh, can save the life of the patient equally effectively by as compared to the con- conventional CPR, which involves both the compression and mouth to mouth breathing or breathing support the important uh, advantage of hands only cpr or chest compression cpr is that it minimizes the interruption of chest compression because as said by dr vinit uh, continuous blood supply maintenance by giving these compression to the brain is very important and whenever we are interrupting due to one or another reason uh, that supply goes interrupted so the target is to minimize the interruption during the chest compression and it should be around 100 compressions per minute and uh, the hand should be kept properly on the center of the chest and one should be uh, keeping his or her body on the straight on the patient's body uh, 90 degree angle should be there and the compression should be delivered effectively and it should be fast and uh, effective that around one third of the chest should get compressed uh, by these compressions so the hands only cpr is the one cpr which can be delivered by untrained person All right Dr Tyagi if you could uh, you know explain the process of CPR and uh, how it should be done So uh, CPR is very important and everybody should know the basic CPR what the general public needs to know is compression only CPR uh, whenever you see a patient of uh, cardiac arrest that is somebody who has suddenly fallen and there is no pulse and there is no respiration then you have to do cpr uh, first make the patient lie down straight in supine position and tilt the head backwards a little so that the chin is lifted up so that the airway is cle- uh, cleared and then with uh, bilateral uh, arms you interlock your fingers like this 
and with the heel of the palm this one you have to press on the lower third on the of the chest bone that is the lower third of your sternum and you have to put your compressions in such a way that the lower sternum dips 2 to 2.5 inches inside the chest so that there is sufficient blood goes into the vital organs of the body the rate at which you have to do is about 100 per so it should be sufficient and then by doing it the elbow joints should be interlocked and you have to put the pressure to whole of the weight of your body so that there is sufficient number of compressions in a minute and sufficient depth of compression that is most important for an effective CPR and meanwhile somebody should call ambulance because uh, it is usually not helpful unless and until you get external help also. So CPR should be continued 100 beats per minute till the time you get any help. All right, so very important points to keep in mind, especially as we said, uh, you know, the increase in cardiac arrest that are, are being experienced. Uh, we'll slip into a short break and return with more questions for the doctors. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching Health and Wellness Save a Life. Today we're talking about the importance of doing CPR and uh, you could actually save the life of somebody who's undergoing a cardiac arrest. Well, uh, let's go across to our doctors for more on CPR. And Dr. Garg, according to our discussion, uh, cardiopulmonary resuscitation is a life-saving technique. Will CPR always save a life? No, it's not like that. Before answer of this question, we have to understand that why cardiac arrest occur. It occurred due to some of the underlying pathologies, some of the underlying disease in our body like heart attack or any form of arrhythmia. What is arrhythmia? Arrhythmia in which there is an abnormal heartbeat is there or a heart failure. So if any form of disease is there which is able to do cardiac arrest. So if the cardiac arrest occur, it means that the pathology are already at such a level that it can cause to cardiac arrest means the disease is as a critical level. So if the patient undergo in a cardiac arrest and if we did CPR, by CPR we cannot modify the underlying pathology. Underlying pathology is there which has to be treated. So not in every cases the CPR save the life in adequate medical facility, in adequate medical environment with the presence of adequate life-saving medicines and with trained persons. Trained person means the staff which is trained in doing CPR. The survival rate is very minimal that is only less than 10 percent to be exact around 5 to 10 percent in adequate medical facility with adequate drugs with trained person. But if it is done by inadequate medical facility in by inadequately trained persons or without any medicines like roadside then the survival rate is very low that is around less than five percent three to five percent so not in every case is the cpr survives the patient but it is still necessary for the life of the patient Right. Now, Dr. Agrawal, uh, what we do know is that, you know, in India, almost every family has at least one person uh, suffering from cardiovascular disease. So, if you could explain to our viewers how important it is for patient caregivers as well as relatives and family members to learn basic CPR. So, the patients who are already suffering cardiac disease are always at higher risk of having an event like of cardiac arrest, which may require uh, CPR. So, every uh, family member of that particular family or rather uh, every uh, member in this population should learn the basic CPR because not only the family members sometimes at workplace or at uh, uh, other scene one can definitely help one or another person. So sudden cardiac arrest is an unpredictable event and it can happen to anyone not only the cardiac uh, disease patient. So one should know the basic CPR steps and uh, even one can uh, see the videos and even there are workshops uh, where one can uh, just know the particular steps of the CPR and practice them to uh, get themselves trained in the basic CPR steps which definitely can help at the time of uh, need uh, to that particular patient uh, where this patient has under, uh, suffered cardiac arrest and nowadays even CPR is being taught in the school uh, so the young children or adolescents uh, who are 
growing up can uh, de develop the habit of doing CPR in the case of emergencies. So basically, not only the family members of a cardiac disease patient, rather everyone should learn uh, CPR techniques. Even there are websites uh, from the cardiologic societies like American Heart Associations and, and others are there where videos have been put to uh, train the person, general population about the CPR steps. All right, so very important point on everyone, you know, should know basic CPR to help any family member. Dr. Tyagi, the majority of us don't know the exact technique of CPR. And then there's always this fear that they could, you know, get involved in legal proceedings. Is giving CPR legal in India? Uh, yes, uh, I think there's nothing should be feared about in such an emergency, medical emergency. It's our moral and social duty even. Uh, there are no legal implications once you witness a cardiac pa arrest patient who is not breathing, there is no pulse. CPR should be given and uh, CPR only those who can give because in panic situation uh, trying to recall the CPR is difficult. So uh, it should be learned and trained to all the children and school and college going students so that on dummies they can practice it because uh, most of the times who is ill trained they give inadequate force, inadequate thrust, so that they are, it usually fails. So the, uh, they should be trained and even motivated and should learn CPR. And so that because many a times uh, cardiac arrest happens in gymnasiums, in near swimming pools due to drowning, or in sports also, in sports we have seen they have occurred. So everyone should know basic CPR, that is compression only CPR. Uh, because uh, that doesn't require any medical instrument. Meanwhile, you can call for the ambulance and start doing the CPR in a proper way. Uh, as I uh, explained earlier, the proper number of beads that is about 100 to 120 beat, uh, thrushes per minute and adequate pressure to dip the sternum 2 to 2.5 inches is very important to generate adequate pressure uh, and the pulse too so that the vital organs are perfused very well. Alright, Dr. Gar, can someone who has already suffered a cardia, uh, cardiac arrest and have another one? Yes. They look at that most of the cardiac arrest occur when someone has disease heart. For example, if the patient has heart attack and during this episode, the patient suddenly go into the cardiac arrest. Now we treat the patient, we survive the patient. but due to heart attack the patient has some of some form of cardiomyopathy what is this mean of cardiomyopathy cardiomyopathy means the pumping power of the heart the pumping power of the heart is reduced so that in the future also the patient can undergo second cardiac arrest or even a third cardiac arrest so if the patient has already a disease heart then the patient can undergo a second episode of cardiac arrest in the future but if we do a regular medical checkups of the patient, we do a regular medicines and we did a we pass a healthy lifestyle. Healthy lifestyle means with adequate diet, with adequate yoga, with adequate exercise and regular medicine, we can help the patient to prevent another cardiac arrest or another cardiac heart attack. So it is not like that if the patient develop a cardiac arrest once then it is only one in a lifetime but no the patient can undergo a repeated cardiac arrest if you do not undergo a healthy lifestyle healthy checkups and regular medicines right and dr agrawal what precaution should existing heart patients take while you know they're traveling see uh, during travel then one important thing is that they should keep their medication with them or adequate stocks like the patient they are going for one or two days they should rather they should keep their medication stock of more than what they are planning because we see in commonly in our practice that uh, patient has been planned for their uh, trip for one or two days but the trip goes long and they just skip their medication because the stock gets adjusted so that is the most important thing about uh, the patient who are traveling uh, for long distances and uh, second thing that uh, patients who are traveling to the uh, environment which are unaccept and like uh, high altitude or something like this uh, like the indian patient who are going to do leh ladakh or similar situation so the patient who are not uh, having a routine oxygen level at home they should not they should avoid uh, going to those higher altitude positions because they can develop low oxygen level in those surroundings and uh, uh, they should do the 
acclimatized activity only like the patient is doing only 100 to 100 meter walk uh, at home but while going traveling they are uh, started doing one kilometer walk or something like that so unacclimatized activity during uh, travel or tourism can lend them into a uh, symptomatic state of uh, breathlessness or even angina so they should not do the activities which they are not acclimatized so these precautions should be taken while uh, one going for travel Right. And uh, Dr. Tyagi, how does an automatic external defibrillator help a person who is in cardiac arrest? See, uh, automatic uh, external defibrillators are uh, available in many countries now at public places like shopping malls or uh, railway stations, bus stops, these areas where there is uh, public space. Uh, they have uh, artificial intelligence that is they have a once you switch on them they have voice commands to do cpr also they can guide you to do the cpr then when you apply the pads they tell how to apply the pads and they can read the ecg of the patient at that time and particularly give a shock at that time if they find it's a ventricular arrhythmia that is the something which causes cardiac arrest so they can give an electric shock immediately at that time. Meanwhile, the ambulance and the other help can come. So these are very important. I think it should be soon available in our public spaces also. But yes, it requires a lot of infrastructure and expenditure. Once it is available, so because ambulance takes time to come, once you call and you bring. So these are very helpful in converting an abnormal rhythm, uh, rhythm at that time. And the patient can become conscious and lives can be saved with that. All right. Well, thank you so much, doctors, for answering all our questions. And hopefully the viewers have also, you know, learned something today about the importance of the CPR and its role in reviving and saving a life. Thank you all for watching at home. Goodbye.